Welcome back to fall year two of the Stardew Valley Min Max and 100% Perfection Guide. We're covering fall days 13 through 20, where we continue to expand our starfruit wine gains to make maximum profit while we wait for the rest of the cooking recipes to achieve perfection. We'll break down the exact number of kegs we have and how much starfruit we are growing in order to see if we should keep expanding our kegs or perhaps start growing some more starfruit. We begin with Fall Day 13, where we complete Key's Danger in the Deep challenge in a single day. I have a whole separate video for this challenge, so make sure to check it out if you have not yet. Moving on to Day 14, which is a Sunday, so we have to check the TV for the Queen of the Sauce recipe, which is really the most important thing we must do for the rest of this series, as all we have left for perfection is cooking the final recipes. But of course, in the meantime, we'll continue min-maxing and try to earn as much profit from our starfruit wine production as possible. We collect the jades and have a harvest of starfruit in the greenhouse, which holds 119 starfruit. With the hyper speed grow, the starfruit grow in 7 days, so we're getting 119 starfruit per week, or 17 per day, from just the greenhouse. After more farm chores, we bring 110 iridium bars to sell to Clint for 165,000 G. We warp to the desert and buy over 400 starfruit seeds from Sandy, and since it is Staircase Sunday, we bring our stash of jade to the desert trader and trade for over 500 staircases. We return to the farm and harvest and replant all the starfruit in all three of our starfruit garden pot sheds. Each holds 137 garden pots with starfruit, meaning every harvest, which occurs every 12 days since we have to use the deluxe retaining soil instead of speed grow, we gain 411 starfruit. That's 34 starfruit per day, or 239.75 per week from our sheds. After this, we collect the tappers from the quarry, then spend some time grinding in the mines for some hardwood, which will turn into wood with our wood chippers. We need lots of wood and oak resin to craft more kegs, although we might reach the point where we have way too many kegs and might need a greater income of starfruit. This is why I have been mentioning just how much starfruit we are getting per week, because we want that number to be greater than the number of kegs we own, since kegs take about a week to process starfruit wine. We'll see just how close our numbers are the next time we visit the island farm, and we'll count the starfruit there, which will be a bit later in the video. For now, we will try to finish the aquatic overpopulation special order. So after dropping items back at the farm, we head to the mountain lake, and we can see we still need to catch five midnight carp before we pass out. The midnight carp can only be caught after 10 p.m., which is why we waited until this time. After spending an hour and a half fishing and catching no midnight carp, completing the quest tonight seems a bit hopeless. But I was streaming while playing this day, and someone mentioned Midnight Carp have a higher catch rate in the forest pond. So we real quick warp back to the farm and rush right over to the forest pond. We get a bit lucky by finding some bubbles, so we get bites very quickly, but still have to somehow catch 5 Midnight Carp in just 2 hours. Luckily our first catch is a Midnight Carp, and just a couple catches later we get another, but since we have our wild bait, we get lucky as well with a double catch here. Just two left to go, and we get lucky once again with another double catch of the Midnight Carp, putting us at 10 total, completing the aquatic overpopulation special order, and the time didn't even reach 1am. So lesson learned, always fish at the forest pond when looking for Midnight Carp. We end the day back at the farm and fall asleep, moving on to day 15. After smelting some iron, we sell a small amount of iridium bars to Clint, then must head straight over to Piers before he leaves his counter and buy some fairy seeds. We next tend to the farm chores, then work to the island and collect what resources we can while we're here, then select the Skull Cavern Invasion Challenge from the Golden Walnut Room. Back at the farm, we plant our fairy seeds, then head to the mines and spend a few hours grinding there, then go back to the farm. We decide to chop any trees in Cindersap Forest for some more wood, and I can't really recall why I entered Marnie's ranch, but upon exiting, we were actually met with a cutscene. This is Leia's Six Heart event, activated in any season except winter while Leia is in this area. We somehow just lift Leia up by her feet so she can reach a fruit in the tree. She successfully grabs it, then sort of slides off of us. Leia offers us a piece of the fruit, 
but we clearly take down a whole entire apple here, and I swear that fruit looked more like a peach, but oh well. We chop the secret wood stumps, then finish clearing all the trees in Cindersat Forest, and return to the farm. Since we still have some time on our tropical curry plus five foraging buff, we actually head to Ginger Island and chop down all the trees we can find on the island here. After this, we find a few more trees to chop outside of Linus's tent, then end the day gathering more hardwood in the mines. We begin day 16, the day of the Stardew Valley Fair. We can enter town anytime between 9am and 3pm to begin this festival, and normally when we're maxing we would arrive as close to 3pm as possible, but after taking care of our farm chores we decide to just head straight over at around 1030. We bring a very special item to this year's fair, the Mayor's Lucky Purple Shorts. We put it on display and Lewis bribes us with 750 star tokens to remove them, even after we have already clearly put on a show for the whole town to see, but we'll take the tokens, which is a bit less than first place prize of 1000, but we already did that last year, so this year we were nice and let Pierre win, who's clearly using our crops by the way. But anyway, we bet green a few times on the spinner game, and earn enough star tokens to buy a couple of the decorative items, then arrive back at the farm at 10pm. We can see our starfruit wine will be ready tomorrow, so while we have some time left in the day, we go ahead and cycle as much coffee as we can in our keg sheds, then pass out. Moving on to day 17, we begin by crafting 10 heavy tappers, then we start the starfruit wine cycle over by the bus stop, then make a detour to the quarry to collect the ready tap goods, and place down the heavy tappers. We warp back to the farm to cycle the hardwood chippers since we will want as much wood as possible to craft maximum kegs. We continue the keg cycle over by the road and inside the tunnel, then head over to the railroad area and collect all the oak resin here. Back at the farm we keep cycling our wood chippers and also get a round of coffee in, and then we plant our pumpkin seed where the pumpkins had grown on our field, then use the wood we have gathered to craft an additional 66 kegs. We warp to the desert and begin cycling all of our starfruit wine kegs here. It's already starting to get quite late in the day, so I probably should have put some starfruit in our keg sheds rather than another round of coffee, but hopefully we'll have enough time left in the day to finish those. After cycling every keg here, we can begin placing down the new kegs, which take quite a bit of time and planning, as we need to make sure we don't place any kegs on tiles that NPCs will pass through. And at the same time, we want to try to place down the kegs in a layout that maximizes the space here, but also leaves a path to get to Skull Cavern as quick as possible. We are able to place down all of our new kegs and get a starfruit brewing in each of them before 1am, but we definitely don't have enough time to finish putting starfruit in our keg shed kegs. But that's okay. What we can do over the next week, instead of having starfruit brewing in the sheds, we can keep cycling coffee in order to get through our many stacks of coffee beans, and even cycle some of our many wheat to brew beer. We pass out and move on to day 18, which is a super luck day, so today would be a good day to complete the Skull Cavern Invasion Challenge. We did complete one of these quite some time ago, so why don't we make this one slightly more interesting by challenging ourselves even further. We'll make it past floor 100 without using any crafted staircases, and bring minimal items with us for a sort of survival challenge. We will only be allowed our pickaxe, hammer, slingshot, rings, and then nothing else. This means no bringing food with us, which will make things very difficult. Our only hope for healing is finding food inside Skull Cavern, so we will need to be extra careful with our health. This challenge was quite a bit tougher than completing the danger in the deep within a single day, as with that one we had access to all the resources we needed. But with the Skull Cavern invasion here, we are very limited, especially when it comes to healing items. I ended up getting knocked out and sent to Dr. Harvey's twice, but that's alright, the third time's the charm, right? We do have access to our explosive ammo, which helps a lot, as I find slingshotting the rocks is always the quickest way of clearing them and finding a ladder down. So we try to mostly ignore the enemies when we can, but sometimes we may get unlucky and come across a dinosaur floor. 
We could argue using stone we have gathered to skip these floors, but I instead clear the enemies as quickly as possible while avoiding taking damage to move past. We have also brought the slime charmer ring with us, which we typically don't utilize, but it ended up being quite helpful for this challenge on floors with lots of slimes, making us not take any damage from them and saving our health. We do make good use of any food drops from enemies, such as spicy eel from serpents, crab cakes from rock crabs, and the potions from the iridium bats. We can also sometimes find purple mushrooms on the floors, which can also help heal quite a bit. Using the strategy of being extra careful with dealing with enemies and lots of pausing, and spamming our slingshot, we are able to make it all the way to floor 100. This challenge ended up being not too bad once we found the right strategy to use, and getting lucky with healing items. I would normally make a whole video for a challenge like this, but I decided we could come up with something even more challenging, like perhaps not bringing any explosive ammo or no healing whatsoever. If anyone has any fun or maybe not so fun ideas, let me know in the comments, and I'll leave a link to the live stream covering this challenge in case you want to see it in real time. We end up collecting 94 radioactive ore and pass out on floor 119. We wake up on day 19, where we'll have an island starfruit harvest to tend to, so we'll finally be able to do some math and see just how much starfruit we're gaining per week. We will need some seeds as usual, so after the farm chores we bring 320 iridium bars to Clint to sell for 480,000 G. It was very necessary to do this before 9am today, since Clint visits the community center on Fridays, and we can see here that he leaves his desk at 9am. We travel to Sandy's Oasis and spend all of our money on starfruit seeds, buying around 1200. We get a quick cycle of coffee brewing in the sheds, then warp to Ginger Island and begin the starfruit harvest. We currently have 589 tiles growing starfruit with Deluxe Speed Grow, which will grow starfruit in 8 days. So 589 starfruit every 8 days means we're getting 73.6 starfruit per day, or 515 per week. 515 from the island, plus 240 from the sheds, plus 119 from the greenhouse, brings us to a total of 874 starfruit per week. So ideally, to perfectly balance our starfruit income, we should have 874 kegs to process starfruit wine every week. We'll count our kegs shortly to see how close this number is, but first let's finish off this day with a few more cycles of coffee in the keg shed. Our final day of this video is day 20, a super luck day, so I decided it's a good day to grind for some radioactive ore in the dangerous mines. Since we'll spend most of the day there, we fill our keg sheds with wheat to brew some beer, which takes around a day to brew. We'll spend the rest of the day in the mines gathering radioactive ore, and of course hardwood to turn into wood for more kegs. But do we even need more kegs to keep up with the amount of starfruit we are growing? Let's go ahead and see just how many kegs we currently have to find out. When we first started our keg empire, we began with placing them at the bus stop. We quickly filled this area with 84 kegs, then soon later expanded to the road with 74 more kegs, and inside the tunnel with 127 more kegs. This outside the farm area totals at 285 kegs. After filling that space, we built two deluxe sheds on our farm and filled them with kegs at 137 each, with an indicator keg outside the shed as well, for a total of 276 keg shed kegs. Recently, we have expanded our keg empire to the desert and currently have 261 kegs placed there. So if we add all these numbers up, we have a grand total of 822 kegs to process 874 starfruit per week. So we could actually use a few more kegs, so of course we'll keep expanding our setup in the desert, but very soon we'll have more kegs than we have starfruit gains per week. So we might consider building some more starfruit garden pot sheds on the farm, or perhaps overhaul our island starfruit setup to utilize pressure nozzles, sprinklers, and hyper speed grow. But we'll need a lot more radioactive ore for that. We were able to gain a fair amount of 82 radioactive ore and 288 hardwood in the mines today, which will help grow our starfruit wine gains immensely. 
we'll see just how much more we can grow our starfruit wine empire next time and also finish up the month of fall, putting us just one more month away from achieving perfection. We're extremely close, so if you're interested in seeing the rest of the series and what else is to come, please consider subscribing to be sure to see the videos, and feel free to leave a comment with anything you'd like to share, and as always, thank you for watching, and goodbye.